Greetings all, witches and wizards. Today we have a special treat. Yaniel of Gryffindor will read the tales of Beedle the Bard. The Tales of Beedle the Bard is a collection of stories written for wizards and witches. They have been popular bedtime readings for centuries, with the results that the Hopping Pot and the Fountain of Fair Fortune are as familiar to many of the students at Hogwarts as Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty are to the muggle children of the world. And now, without further ado, my young witches and wizards, Yaniel of Gryffindor. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm Yaniel from Gryffindor House, and I've come to read to you the tales of Beetle and the Bard. Now, I had a copy of that book around here somewhere. Where did it... Ah, no matter, children. With a quick flick of the wand, Akio! If you would like to follow along, the story of the three brothers can be found on book t uh, page 87. The Tale of Three Brothers. There were once three brothers who were traveling along a lonely winding road at twilight. In time, the brothers reached a river too wide to wade through, too dangerous to swim across. However, these brothers were learned in the magical arts, so they simply waved their wands and made a bridge appear across the treacherous water. They were halfway across it when they found their path blocked by a hooded figure. And death spoke to them. He was angry that he had been cheated out of three new victims, for travers, travelers usually drowned in the river. But death was cunning. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. So the oldest brother, who was a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. A wand that will always win duels for its owner. A wand worthy of a wizard who had conquered death. So, Death crossed to an elder tree on the banks of the river, fashioned a wand from the branch that hung there, and presented it to the eldest brother. The second brother, who was an arrogant man, decided he wanted to humiliate Death still further and asked for the power to recall others from death. So, death picked up a stone on the riverbank and gave it to the second brother, told him that the stone would have the power to bring back the dead. And death asked the third and youngest brother what he would like. The youngest brother was the humblest and also the wisest of them, and he did not trust death. So he asked for something to enable him to go forth from that place without being followed by death. And death almost unwillingly handed over his own cloak of invisibility. Then death stood aside and allowed the three brothers to continue on their way, and they did so, talking with wonder of the adventure they'd had and admiring death's gift.
gifts. In due course, the three brothers separated, each one to his own destination. The first brother traveled on for a week or more, reaching a distant village, sought out a fellow wizard with whom he had a quarrel. Naturally, with the Elder Wand as his weapon, he could not fail to win the duel that followed. Leaving his enemy dead upon the floor, the oldest brother proceeded to an inn where he boasted loudly of the powerful wand he had snatched from death himself and how it made him invincible. That very night, another wizard crept upon the eldest brother as he lay, wine sodden upon his bed. The thief took the wand for good measure, slit the elder brother's throat. And so death took the first brother for his own. Meanwhile, the second brother journeyed to his own home where he lived alone. There he took out the stone that had the power to recall the dead and turned it thrice in his hand. One, two, three. To his amazement and his delight, the figure of the girl he had once hoped to marry before her untimely death appeared at once before him. Yet she was sad and, and cold, separated from him by a veil. Although she had returned to the mortal world, she did not truly belong there and she suffered for it. Finally, the second brother, driven with hopeless longing, killed himself so as to truly join her in death. And so death took the second brother for his own. But though death searched for the third brother for many years, he was never able to find him. It was only when he had attained a great age that the youngest brother finally took off the cloak of invisibility and gave it to his son. Then he greeted death as an old friend and went with him gladly. As equals, they departed this life. And that, my friends, is the tale of the three brothers and the timeless relics that provide much of the mystery and lore of the Harry Potter saga. Thank you all for joining me today. Bye-bye, everyone. Till next time.